said, she was, they used a lot of things, but she would have said whiskey and lemons. Now, I'm not here to recommend those kind of things to you, <laughs> but she swore by that for a deep chest hole. And uh, there's a lot of people today and back then using so many simple remedies at home. And oftentimes, simple is the very best choice. We had a lady come to our farm store, and she, for seven years, had tried fertility drugs. And it just wasn't working. She would spent thousands of dollars. It just wasn't working. So she said, help, what can I do? So I said, well, we haven't done much in that area. Let's see what we can find out. And this was very humbling. Um, we got out some books. We looked around. and. Um, Brenda took a book home with her. She came back a little while later and said, I would like to try this and this and this. So it turned out to be a tea for with, uh, red clover, nettle, and red raspberry. So we mixed her up a bunch of tea. She worked full time. She was so organized. She took her thermosis to work. And she was so dedicated. And I said, you know, you have to drink half a gallon of this a day. And she said, I'll do it, anything. So she did. About a month and a half later, she came back and said, I don't think so. This is just so much work. I don't know. I said, well, just keep going. You're halfway there. So in three months' time, she came back, and she was pregnant. Oh. And crying. <laughs> and we were both crying. <laughs> and uh, it was just very beautiful. And uh, it's uh, a lesson in um, simplicity. And just a lot of times, simple is the best choice. So she had two beautiful children, and then a few years later, came back and said, "Okay, now what can I do to not get pregnant?" <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Simple is often the very best choice. Um, you know, you take your whiskey. You've got a little animal that's dying on you. You give it a shot of whiskey. So uh, one of the most important tenets of natural healing is that the body can heal itself. And a really good example of this is in the case of colds. A cold virus comes into the body, so the body will kick it into high gear trying to get rid of it. Fever is a very natural process that tries to burn out that virus. So in the case of colds, when you get the very first symptoms, maybe a sore throat, you're feeling hot, catch it right there. And there's a wonderful herbs that can help you sweat out the cold. This is a very old idea, but it really works. And I know for sure you can get rid of that cold in a day or two at the most. So what you do, you gotta call the boss, say I'm not coming in today. You gotta uh, take a hot bag or a hot foot bath. And bundle up, put on a cap, wool socks, you really bundle up, and you drink a diaphoretic tea. Elder, uh, like Vic mentioned, you can use the blossoms, uh, peppermint, and yarrow blossoms. It's a very old recipe for a tea that will help you sweat out the cold. And so you, you can take uh, echinacea, or the black elderberry, like she mentioned, every two hours. Uh, in tincture form, you're sending around the tincture, it's an alcohol based remedy. And you can take that every two hours, about a half a dropper, that will help your immune system work better. And uh, you can make some garlic soup. Uh, there's a quart of clove garlic soup that uh, will cure about anything, but <laughs> it's really good for a cold because it has a lot of antibiotic properties. So, what you do, you, you you keep your, you don't, you don't eat, you just drink broth. Uh, this soup is very good. Go to bed and you will sweat profusely. So you're enhancing your body process to get rid of a cold. This is one of the examples I love and how the body is very smart, very intelligent. And there's a way to uh, enhance the process and get rid of a cold pretty quick. May I ask you a quick question? Sure. What do you think about this old adage, you feed a cold and starve a fever? Yeah, you hear that. Um, 
I don't agree with it. <laughs> yeah, because I read something recently in one of my herbal magazines that you should do what you feel is natural. Yeah. In, in the case of a cold, what, what we do, what works for us, is to do a life fast. So I think that sometimes that I know is really believe is true. So thank you, Nancy. Now I wanted to touch on growing herbs because many of them are so easy to grow. Anybody grow herbs? Good. Yeah, they're, they're very easy to grow, and one plant can produce a lot. You can grow them in pots, you know, if you just have a patio. And uh, we're not going to talk a lot about that, but I did want to say um, that you can try it. Uh, it's easy. And um, also wild crafting. Uh, my grannies, my grandfathers, my dad was a farmer. They all did wild crafting. And wild crafting is gathering herbs in the wild. They gathered many foods, too. All kinds of delicious things are available in the wild. Uh, there are a few rules for doing that. If you come up on a plant community, say there's three plants, you're only going to take one. Because I, I use what I call the one-third rule. You never take more than one-third of a plant community. And uh, you don't want to gather by roadside. So you, and you want to make sure you get permission. You can go out and get permission in the countryside to gather. But you don't want you don't want to gather along the road. You want to make sure you're a couple hundred feet away from the roadside. Is that because of pollution? Exactly. And maybe animals uh, using the, the area for bathrooms? It's mostly and car pollution. Car yeah, pollution. Yeah, probably the salt. Salt, right? Good point. Yep. So. Um, to get the optimal medicinal value from plants that you gather from your garden or from the fields, you want to gather mid-morning. And the reason is uh, the leaves, we talked about this yesterday, yes. yeah, for, for uh, taste also. Uh, the leaves have volatile oils. If you crush the leaves right now, you're releasing the volatile oils. They, they turn very quickly into a gaseous state from liquid. So there's actually little teeny sacs on top of the leaves and just under the uh, skin of the leaves. And the sun, when it hits them, they evaporate pretty quickly. So that's why you wait till the dew's off in the morning before the sun hits the leaves and flowers. And then that's the time to gather uh, those parts of the plant. Our roots, of course, you can gather any time of day. You wash your herbs lightly, you pack them dry. And if you're drying them, you want to hang them in a dark, very well ventilated place. And that's a good way to dry them. Some of them, like the calendula flowers that are coming around, you feel how they're kind of sticky? They have a lot of rosin in them. And they take a little uh, special treatment. They need to be dried in a, um, a dehydrator or a low oven on the lowest temperature. Okay, so they, they need to be dried pretty quickly. Um, you, of course, gather leaves before they flower, uh, flowers and seeds at their maturity. And roots you usually gather in the fall. And we're gathering right now uh, dandelion and burdock roots for medicinal leaves. <coughs> now, um, storage of herbs is very important. Um, powdered herbs really only keep about six months. You can extend their life by putting the powdered herbs in the freezer. Okay, so a lot of t you want to be sure you only keep those six months to keep their potential. How long in the freezer? Oh gosh, a good year. Okay, yeah. And then cut leaves and roots will keep a whole year easily. Uh, cut uh, comfrey, for example, mint. Uh, that means chopped up. That's that'll keep for a year. Whole roots, uh, whole golden seal roots, for example, will keep for two years. So, the way I find it. Yeah, so there's another question here about storage. Um, I tried storing, sometimes they don't keep them zip lock in mold or something. <coughs> or mold in oh, really? Have they been dry? Maybe not dry enough. Exactly. Or if your house is damp, maybe. Well, they probably haven't been dried enough. Yeah, too much moisture. Yeah, yeah. You have to when you dry herbs, make sure you crumble them. Really, make sure there's no moisture in there. Yeah. 
Now, um, there are many, many types of